you for joining us tonight. This is a Nevada Department of Wildlife for Conservation Education program. And this is a family program and it is rated PG. So profanity or inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated in the chat box or, or the Q&A. And all questions in the chat box or Q&A should be on topic. And failing to follow these guidelines will result in being muted from the Q&A or being removed from the live stream. And you guys don't have to worry about your cameras or your microphones. Your camera is automatically off and you are all muted. And feel free to use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions. And this will be recorded and put up on our Endow YouTube channel later for viewing if you want to watch anything again or go back for more information. And tonight, our moderators are Abby Zarnecki, Jess Brooks, and Amanda Perez. And with that, we are going to go ahead and get started. So welcome tonight. My name is Michelle Lopez. I am an AmeriCorps wildlife educator down at the Las Vegas office for Endow. And welcome to our first webinar of the Aquatic Endemic Series. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Devil's Hole Pupfish, and next month we'll do another webinar on the Pahrumpf Poolfish. So our agenda for tonight, we're going to cover history and then the Devil's Hole in Ash Meadows, a few case studies, natural disasters, and human conflicts. So what is endemic? Endemic is, an endemic species has only been found in one part of the world and that part only. And these types of plants or animals are most commonly found in more isolated parts of the globe, like islands, where it's not very easy for them to travel to another area or repopulate in other places, but they can be found in other places too, like this Devil's Hole Aquifer um, here in Nevada. And you can see on this map that it's kind of near the border of California and Nevada in the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. And because they are limited to such a small range, endemic species are pretty rare, but they aren't, but their populations aren't always classified as threatened by the IUCN. And the IUCN is the organization that classifies species as vulnerable, endangered, or if it fits into one of the other nine categories. The Devil's Hole pupfish population was last assessed in 2014 by the IUCN. Um, and they were listed as critically endangered on the red list. So pupfish earned their name due to the playful way that they play around like puppies. Like when you look at puppies all in a litter, they're kind of chasing after each other and kind of just going after one another. And that's where pupfish got their name. So it, they are a bright silvery blue little fish with the flat head of a pike and a tiny body of a goldfish. And devil's hole pupfish have several distinctive characteristics, including its smaller size. They're tiny little fish, only about an inch long. And they, have, they don't have pelvic fins, or, which are a pair of fins usually found right under here on the fish. And low fecundity, which is the rate at which it produces offspring, so they're not very high and the rounded caudal or tail fin back here. And they also have less aggressive behavior compared to other pupfish. And the breeding males are this bright blue iridescent color while the females are more olive drab in coloration. They are considered the rarest fish in the world and scientists consider this hole in Nevada to be one of if not the smallest habitat on the planet for vertebrae. And these devil's hole pupfish primarily feed on algae that grows on the limestone shelf, which you can see in these two pictures. And they also occasionally consume pellets dropped by owls that are flying overhead above the cavern. And under the best circumstances, some biologists say that this shallow pool could probably only support a population of about 600 pupfish. So because of the pupfish's special status and their special species as a whole, all these organizations, the Nevada Department of Wildlife, the National Park Service, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service have all come together to protect and sustain the Devil's Hole pupfish population. 
So Ash Meadows is, so Devil's Hole is located in the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge over in the Mojave Desert. And it is a deep pool inside a sunken limestone cavern. Devil's Hole is a pretty extreme environment with water temperatures and oxygen levels that most fish wouldn't be able to survive in. They have a very specific and unique habitat because they live their life in the top 80 feet of the 93 degree water of the Devil's Hole Cavern. And this temperature stays pretty consistent year round, which is probably part of the reason why these pupfish are able to spawn year round, but they're more prevalent during April and May. So this is a picture of the cavern from being in it and also from kind of above. And the water that they live in is a prehistoric ocean from 12,000 years ago, and it's sometimes called fossil water because of how old it is. Ash meadows used to be covered in water over time, but over time it started drying up and the water level started decreasing to what's left of it now, which is small scattered isolated pockets of water. Devil's Hole only gets about four hours of sunlight a day and is more than 400 feet deep. And as you can see in this picture, it's pretty narrow and it only has an eight foot by 60 foot opening. Here is another illustration of what we know of Devil's Hole and the cavern. It's kind of like an underwater underground complex system that scientists believe connect to other parts of the world. And the deepest part that any of the divers have been able to access is 400 feet, but they can see that it extends past there. They just haven't been able to physically go down and map it out. So they also discovered that earthquakes thousands of miles away can impact the water in Devil's Hole, which is kind of why it leads, might lead them to believe that it goes deeper down and the water is all connected. There was actually a 1965 Lost Divers mystery where four school high school friends went into Devil's Hole to go for a little scuba diving adventure. Um, there were four friends, Paul, David, Bill, and Jack. And Paul, David, and Bill went into Devil's Hole while Jack stayed at the top just in case anything happened. And the other three put on their scuba gear and went in. And a little after midnight, Paul failed to resurface so David and Bill went back down to look for him. So they were all frantic trying to find their friend and Bill followed David down, but after a while he also lost sight of David. And they had professional divers, military personnel and volunteer divers as well go in and try to search for, the, for them, but the bodies of Paul and David, who are two recently become brothers-in-law, they were never found. Um, so this just shows us how much there is more to learn about Devil's Hole and map it out. So because it's so hard to get into, it's also very difficult for researchers to access and study. So in this picture on the left, you can see that they set up the system where they kind of have these grates above the surface of the water, and then they'll have um, the scientists go in and count the populations from the surface, while other scientists put on their scuba gear and then count at the bottom underneath the water where um, they can kind of get a closer look at the cavern. And here's another picture of what the canyon looks like and it just depicts how narrow the area is and how fascinating it is for these tiny little fish to live in a, such a specific environment. And recently the biologists have been able to find food that feeds the fish and give them higher, a higher quality diet so that they're able to stabilize their population levels a little bit more. And agency staff have also enhanced the habitat in Devil's Hole by adding vertical structures to the shelf, which provide shelter for a smaller fish and also another substrate for the algae to grow on. So this graph shows the Devil's Hole pupfish population. Um, and recently they've been their numbers have been coming closer and closer to extinction, especially very recently. Things like rapidly shifting climate change or groundwater pumping and other human impacts have definitely had the ripple effect over to Devil's Hole. 
So when the population counts began in 1972, the pupfish population was fairly strong. They had reached almost 500 individuals, as you can see here in the earlier parts of the graph. But just 30 years later to where we are now, that number has dwindled down to 38. And in the, in the late 1970s over to 1996, for the middle of this graph where the red line shows, the population was pretty stable. Um, they had an average count of 324 individuals, but soon after that, they, just, they started to decrease. And the Supreme Court has also helped a little bit by setting minimum water levels for Devil's Hole. And the population has still continued to struggle ever since then, which at one point reached a low of about 35 fish in 2006 and 2013. And the population has rebounded occasionally, as you can see it towards the right side of the graph, but there's still less than 200 individuals over in Devil's Hole. So in fall of 2018, they were, there were 187 pupfish, pupfish, which was a 15 year high. And then another high in spring 2019 with 128 pupfish in spring. And fall had 170 individuals, but there was also a earthquake that year, which impacted the, their population size. And the population also tends to decline in winter just because there's a little bit more of a food limitation. So I'm gonna play this video for you guys. Um, Devil's Hole is also very unique in the way as it acts as a unexpected indicator of seismic activity around the world. So waves have splashed up to two meters reacting to large earthquakes as far as Japan, Indonesia, and China. And as we'll see in a little bit, it definitely shakes up the ecosystem. So right about here is when you can see the earthquake has made its way over to Devil's Hole and the water sloshes up and down. So this is from 2019 and there was a 7.1 magnitude earthquake in Ridgecrest, California, which is about 150 miles away from Devil's Hole. And it resulted in a 10 to 15 foot slosh of the waves of the water rising and falling. And you can see from the beginning, this camera was stable and underwater, but once the earthquake hit, it was just up and down. But instances like this have happened before, which is kind of why it leads um, scientists into wondering just how deep the pool goes. In 2018, there was also a 7.9 magnitude earthquake in Alaska that had its impacts on the cave. And then 10 years before that, in 2008, there was also another earthquake in China that forced the groundwater up. And here's another video. This one was caused by an earthquake in Mexico. So when an earthquake strikes, waves of energy ripple out from the earthquake's epicenter. And these seismic waves move through the Earth's surface and the inner layers. And when they pass through an isolated body of water like Devil's Hole, they cause some of the sloshing. And when this happens, it does come with some setbacks, but some positives too. The short term negative impact is that the sloshing probably resulted in some pupfish, especially juveniles dying or the eggs on the shelf probably were washed away. But some positives are that with washing away, the waves were able to clear away some algae and dead leaves that, adult, that um, pull oxygen from the water. And the adult fish probably started spawning shortly after this um, when they returned to the shelf because of the shock from the earthquake, which probably caused a hormone release in the fish, which fish which told them that, oh no, I probably need to pass down my DNA to future generations. So 
So on top of all these natural disasters, they also have to deal with humans. So the water wars of the 1960s and 70s were a controversial topic because the overpumping of groundwater for irrigation was starting to impact the water levels in Devil's Hole. And a corporate ranch drilled a test well near Devil's Hole along with several nearby wells, causing the water level to drastically drop. And by 1972, the ground le groundwater levels dropped to almost four feet, which exposed more than 60% of the limestone shelf that those pupfish need to spawn, forage, and ultimately survive because they depend on it so heavily. These yellow bump bumper stickers that say save the pupfish were created um, and expressed to support the devil's, devil's whole pupfish populations. But of course, with one opinion comes another and those in favor of pumping groundwater counteracted these stickers with bright red ones that said, kill the pupfish. So this whole instance made its way up to the Supreme Court, which in 1976 ruled in favor of the fish, the whole and the environment because of the historical and scientific value. But also as recently as 2016, there was another controversial instance with the devil's hole. So three trespassers were caught on surveillance video and usually the motion sensors would have triggered a loud alarm that probably would have told them like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be but right before this a few days maybe like a week or so right before they had turned it off what there was a barn owl that was roosting in the area and it was setting off too many false alarms so they just decided to turn it off. But the Devil's Hole researchers were watching the surveillance video because there had been an earthquake over the weekend and they wanted to see how it was impacting the hole, but instead they saw some drunk trespassers. So these drunk individuals were able, they jumped the fence and they got into the pool right where the pupfish breed. And so when the staff went back to check out Devil's Hole to make sure everything was still okay, they saw the remnants of the trespassers. They saw beer cans, vomit, shot shell, ammunition boxes, underwear, and a single dead pupfish pup floating at the top of the pool. And this whole thing turned into a massive investigation and it was all over the news and a team called the Scorpion Task Force was assembled and they were trying to find these people and hold them accountable. One of the detectives on the case even swabbed the beer cans and ran DNA tests on the underwear and luckily enough, they, because they had so many cameras around the area, they were able to see the unique four-wheeler that the individuals had dro driven away in. And ironically, they were just joking around. They were like, oh, we'll probably find it on Craigslist. And they did find it on Craigslist. And because it was so unique, they were able to pinpoint that that was the exact car. So they went over to the place of the guy who had posted the listing on Craigslist, and he admitted that it was his vehicle and he was one of the ones in the surveillance videos. And they found the two other friends that he was with and they were all very cooperative with the investigators, the detectives and law enforcement. And the one, one of them that had gotten into the pool, he admitted that he did know about the devil's whole pupfish. He knew that they were endangered, but he said he hadn't meant to harm them and he was just drunk in the moment trying to make his friends laugh. But this was a very, costly action because he ended up going to jail and is no longer allowed into any of the federal public lands. So with all these various factors continuing to threaten the Devil's Hole pupfish population, the Ash Meadows Fish Conservation Facility um, set up a refuge tank and it has been up and running since 2013 and the scientists have been trying to establish a backup population of these endangered fish. The facility is designed to match the climate, the water chemistry and physical dimensions of the shallow shelf habitat in Devil's Hole, but it's also been very proven, it's also proven to be very difficult to replicate down to the pH levels, the air temperature and all the little details. So to help out the population, the scientists started out by collecting eggs. So biologists placed egg recovery mats into Devil's Hole, which were ceramic tiles covered with carpet. 
and they put that on the shelf for two to three days and then the pet fish went over and deposited their eggs just like normal and then they very carefully transported the mats and the eggs back to the facility. The mats are then placed under microscopes to search for the devil's hole pet fish eggs which has been a very tedious, pro te very tedious process because since the fish are so small, they're only an inch in length, their eggs are about a one millimeter in diameter. And on top of that, they are clear. So once the, once the scientists are able to raise the fish they, and they reach adulthood, they are transferred back here into this refuge tank. And this tank holds about 100,000 gallons of water and ranges in depth from 18 inches to 22 feet. And part of the tank also extends underground and out of the building to closely replicate the dark caverns where the pupfish spend most of their time. So why should we care about these tiny little blue fish if we're probably not gonna be able to even see them? But the Fish and Wildlife Services have a pretty good image to help us wrap our minds around um, ecology as a whole. So if you try to envision every little thing on earth, including these pupfish, us as humans, all the insects and everything in involved, um, if you imagine them as being a thread in a piece of cloth, each one of us represents one thread. And every time a species goes extinct, extinct a thread is removed and the fabric becomes weaker. And as more threads disappear, one by one, the strands separate and fall away. And eventually the original piece of cloth falls apart and it's just gone. And all, of, all living things are part of a complex, delicately balanced network of individuals called the biosphere. So the Earth's biosphere is composed of countless ecosystems like this one in Devil's Hole, which include plants and animals and their physical environments. And no one really knows exactly what's gonna happen with the extinction of organisms and how it'll affect other members of the ecosystem, but the removal of a single species can definitely set off a chain reaction affecting many others. So it's very important for us to see how these little fish, these devil's whole pet fish play a role into that and how it impacts the ecosystem around them. So I want to thank you all again for coming tonight. Hopefully you learned a little more about coolest rarest fish that we have here in the world it's right here in Nevada and if you ever want to check out the Ash Meadows Refuge it's a really wonderful beautiful place to be and I also want to remind you guys that this is a series so we'll be talking about the Pahrump Pool Fish next month and I want to thank Abby and Jess and Amanda for moderating and I'll pop into the Q&A to see if anyone has any more questions. We have lots of questions. Um, I figured if I can ask you some, and then um, we've been getting you some answers for some. So one of the first ones um, was when you were doing research, is there a captive breeding program? Yes, so that's the one that the Ash Meadows Conservation Facility has been able to study and now has been able to successfully um, execute. And I believe UNLV also is playing a role in that and a couple other, I think Mandalay Bay also, they've all been supportive of that and have been able to kind of go through that. And then is the footage from the camera, um, is, can the general public access it? Yes, I'll go back to those two slides. Um, the information is here on the bottom left. So this first video that I showed you guys um, was on an article posted by Kevin Stark on kqed.org. And the article is called Underwater Video Shows Violent Shaking During 7.1 Magnitude SoCal Earthquake. So if you type that into Google, it should be the first link that pops up. And that was from posted in 2019. And the second one is also on YouTube. And if you also search up, here I'll share. Devil's Hole Nevada Tsunami, it was posted in 2015 and that will be up there as well. Um, 
one, another one is what is the age of the water in Devil's Hole? And has it, or has it been dated? It has, um, I think they've estimated it to be around 12,000 years or older. That's why they kind of refer to it as fossil water because fossils are also that old. <laughs> And then, yeah, we just want to reiterate that there is no known depth and there is no limit in the amount of water. We, um, the fisheries biologists have only been able to see so much of the water. Um, I believe we uh, answered that one around 150, or sorry, almost 400 feet. And then there was another 150 feet where they lost sight of the light. They just, dropped it and haven't been able to see the light since. Um, how was the distribution of the devil's hole in the past? Was it just in the hole or somewhere else? That's a really good question. So that's kind of back goes back to what um, endemic means. So because they are an endemic species, they've only been found in devil's hole and they haven't been found anywhere else before. This is awesome to see so many questions. Um, yeah, thank you guys for asking so many questions. <laughs> how does the pupfish differ from the ones found on the Crystal Springs boardwalk? Oh, that's a good question. I stumbled upon this when I was doing a little bit more research on the pupfish over there. So back when Ash Meadows was all covered in water, they had they were pretty similar species and they had very yeah, but they were pretty similar species, but once they started, um, once the water started drying up and they became more isolated pockets of water, that's when they started becoming more distinct from one another. So these fish are related to the other pupfish over in Ash Meadows, but they have those distinct little characteristics that we talked about in the beginning, like they're not as aggressive and they are a little bit smaller and they have that bright blue color and they like the fins that they have are very are pretty different from the other pupfish that we know. Um, I'll answer this one. Will we send follow up emails for further pupfish seminars? Definitely very excited to see so many people on tonight. So yes, we will send you the link to register for the next one. Um, we're planning to do them every Tuesday, the third Tuesday of the next three or four months. So if um, you guys are still interested in this, we'll keep going. <laughs> so plan on the third Tuesday of every month, we'll do a talk like this. Um, and then another question is, what's the pH like? I don't know the exact um, number, but I would assume that it is pretty acidic just because there isn't because there's such low oxygen concentrations in devil's hole um and then i just was able to find it so 7.4 and most fish like at least eight so um it is definitely a little lower on the acidic side for most fish um sorry trying to go through them when the population dips low, do they introduce any captive pupfish back into the population to avoid loss of genes? I do not know, but I don't think so. Just because the ecosystem is so fragile, I think they're trying to be as careful with it as possible. I'll answer this one. Um, I brought up it being connected to other parts of the world. They really have no idea where the bottom of the, <laughs> the water is, the reservoir. So there's, especially in Nevada, we have tons of water, um, underground water caverns. Most we can guesstimate where they start and stop. Uh, this one is very unknown. It's really unknown, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's also very, because there's so much we don't know about it and it hasn't been mapped out, it's also 
kind of dangerous for divers because it's so deep. You want to make sure that you have enough oxygen for the time that you're going to be down there, but you don't know how far it is, so you don't know really what to prepare for to be down there. And also you want to, if any if anyone that's been diving um, could probably speak to this as well, you want to be really careful going up and down and descending into the different levels because I know when I went scuba diving, I went down like five feet and he was like, plug your nose, try to like get the air to escape out of your ears because it was like hurting me because of the elevation change. Definitely. Oh, the count for, um, was there no count for 2020? Um, no, it's, they're still 2020 just finished. So all of 2020 stats uh, will come out this year. So they're just still being finalized. So there are 2020 stats. We just don't have them right now. And actually some of our studies were postponed um, due to social distancing and projects uh, being bumped back that normally con are conducted in the spring. So we were uh, put on hold for a few months. And so we did um, limit some data and research that is normally done in the spring. Uh, did you see how big the refuge tank is? It is 100,000 gallons. Got some kudos, very good job. And do pupfish, oh, we answered that, or I think somebody answered that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, they're cleaning them. I, I can't, I'm losing track. Okay, here's one. Um, is it usually a minimum count that is obtained or are we able to estimate, generate estimates? I think it's kind of hard, especially just, especially for the species in particular where they've seen high numbers and then it also drops down really low and there's so much that we don't know about it we don't know if it could be like there was a slight change in the ph that we were talking about or the acid yeah the acidity levels or anything like that so i think it's pretty difficult to guess but from the last population count you could probably assume it would be pretty close to that range Is there a tour or video walkthrough of the refuge tank at the facility? I am not entirely sure, but I think that the um, Ash Meadows facility website was offering something to be virtual because of COVID social distancing rules. So we will follow up with that for you. Um, is there any evidence that there could be a more complex ecosystem at depths greater than 600 feet? Um, yes, I think that's kind of what the earthquake situations were kind of alluding to. They may be connected way down below that, way past 600 feet that we may not know about yet. Um, yes, uh, one of the questions Thank you all for coming. If you do need to go, please do. And then yes, um, as you close out, the survey pops up for you. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for these. And we'll answer a few more questions before you go. But I was so excited to see everybody tonight. Thank you. Um, another question, I guess there's a pupfish in the White Sands area or the White Sands pupfish. Um, one of the questions is, did you, or were you able to find any research on uh, starting additional populations? I have not, aside from the refuge tank over in Ash Meadows. Oh, here's the question I was wanting to, there we go, keep scooting down. Um, six to 12 months of age is pretty young. I lost it, there we go. <laughs> Does the otolith show a, a winter? Did you age to the month? Oh, 
Sorry, I had to read that one. That's okay. Winter feeding. So yes, they will um, keep feeding. Um, it's everything's just a little different right now. Our fisheries biologists are still working around the clock in many places. Um, so people are still out there. They're still getting fed. I'm sorry. Um, and um, they're still doing their counts. So we'll know soon uh, for this last year's counts too. That's another question was, what is the greatest depth that the pupfish has been found? That was I eight. don't think I saw anything that specified. Oh, go ahead. I think I saw 80 feet. So they live in that 80 foot column. The top 80 feet. Pretty yeah. much it. Has the Devil's Hole pupfish belonged to the mosquito family? And if so, do they mainly feed on insect larvae? I um, believe that they mostly feed on the algae on that limestone shelf. And then occasionally, whenever owl, um, owls may fly over because they like to roost in the area, they can drop pellets into the pool. And occasionally, the pupfish will go ahead and peck at that. You answered all 50 questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a great audience. Thank you all so much. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, let me look one thing up real quick. Right back, or yeah, go ahead and check the Q&A. Michelle, there's a couple more questions and then I'm gonna answer one of the other questions real quick. Okay. Um, I have not yet read anything about the shift in algae. I know that they, the scientists um, over at Ash Meadows, they're trying to recreate that specific algae to feed the pupfish both um, in captivity and also to enhance the algae growth that is already in Devil's Hole um, on that limestone shelf. Thank you for the question. Um, so the somebody brought up the mosquito fish and um, they are, yeah, they're not part of the mosquito fish family. They're similar. Um, you can see in the order, the name's similar, but um, it's a different species and it's a different family. <laughs> Sorry. But um, yeah, thank you everybody for coming tonight. This was awesome. Uh, lots of good information and yeah, we'll keep plugging away at our endemic species. Oh, a couple more questions. Um, I've also read about predaceous diving beetles preying on larvae of pupfish. Are there any control measures in Devil's Hole for that beetle? I think that's a tough I, one. Yeah, that is a tough one. <laughs> I haven't read anything about that, but I would assume because they're such a protected species that they would be doing something to control those. Yeah, all the um, funding for all these species all comes from Endangered Species Act. So once they're listed, they get funding um, endangered or endemic. Um, there's that chart on the wildlife species and it gives it like a red, you know, rainbow color on um, how protected they are, how, um, sorry, how tough their conditions are. Um, so they are secured that way. And then depending um, on the state, federal, lands and um, species. So uh, last month we did our talk on um, invasive species and we talked about the prout pool fish and how mosquito fish and crayfish were ravishing those prout pool fish. Um, 
So we have one biologist in the southern region that works on 26 endemic species um, by himself. He has volunteers, he has uh, fisheries help, um, but, every, but that's his specialty. And so, yeah, he tries to cover the entire southern region. He goes up through Tonopah and down, um, but he has 26 species to try and protect and do surveys on every single year. So he's in the field quite a bit. Um, and then the fisheries biologist also helps with this species, Brennan Singer. So there's lots of papers, research papers. So if you have really tough questions that we can't answer, um, there's lots of great scientific articles on them. Um, even on our website, you can find the PowerPoint presentation that Brendan Singer has given in the past. So you can look that up from them too. Um, do we, the next question is, uh, do they have more than a few captive programs in case something happens? Yes. Um, and so, sorry, the Devil's Hole itself is a protected environment. That's why there's cameras, that's why there's fencing. And then they also have the uh, refugiums for that too. So I believe there's at least a couple, um, but because their environment is so specific, it is definitely hard to replicate that environment. So um, they have one big one and then different substations. Oh, do you know if people can find those pup fish bumper stickers? I am not entirely sure, but I feel like the answer is yes. <laughs> if not, you can definitely have a main. <laughs> yes. have a, uh, do we accept volunteers from other states uh, with the pandemic being this slow? And thank you for um, everything. Uh, are not doing any field projects um, right now. Uh, any new field projects, shall we say. So that's, hence all of our webinars, <laughs> all of our normal person talks are all online now. Um, but as soon as we do, please uh, go to our website, sign up to be a volunteer, and then that way we can email you when something becomes available. In our website, um, somebody could type that in for Gabrielle. I think we're caught up again. Awesome. Thank you, guys. If you could think of any more questions later, all of our emails are down here on the left. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you think of something randomly. Thank you all. Have a very good night. <laughs>